Indy race car drivers and fighter jet pilots both endure extreme G-forces. But how do the G-forces in a fighter jet compare to an Indy car? To find out, I get suited up for science. So we got a vest here, John, that has accelerometers that's gonna measure G-forces in all three axes. Just don't throw up on my stuff. <laughs> I'll be riding along with pilot Dave Riggs in his Aero L39C Albatross jet. And when the jet takes off, it rapidly accelerates to a speed of 500 miles an hour. Oh my God! Oh, oh. oh my God! <laughs> We did a lot of um, high G maneuvers. All of these maneuvers put a lot of stress on the body. It was like being in a washing machine. Oh, I got this going two Gs. Four Gs. Six Gs. 7.3 Gs. Our data reveals that at peak moments, in bursts lasting less than two tenths of a second, we're pulling 7.3 Gs. This makes my 160 pound body feel like it weighs over 1,100 pounds. I can't even lift my arms, my face is just shuddering. I've never felt my body that heavy before. To compare the G-forces of the jet to an Indy car, we've enlisted driver Ryan Hunter Ray. Do we have accelerometers up here and on the side okay. down here? Wired up with the same sensors I wore, Ryan puts the pedal down on the brickyard. At peaks of 230 miles an hour, this 700 horsepower IndyCar subjects Ryan to over four Gs in a single turn, lasting an average of 6.6 .6 seconds. That's 33 times longer than the duration of the maximum Gs I experienced during this maneuver. I can tell you that three to four Gs is no joke, and he has to do it 800 times in the race. You can't breathe normally. You can't just intake that oxygen when you want it. It has to be on straight away. In the three and a half hour Indy 500, there are over 88 minutes of turns. And in those turns, Ryan experiences 3,200 cumulative Gs. That means the forces his body sustains will total more than a half a million pounds. When it comes to G-forces in the Indy 500, it's not only about how many Gs, it's about how long those Gs last. For Sports Science on ESPN, I'm John Brinkus.